Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and thank you for joining me as I share with you some work that I've been doing over the past year. I probably haven't told you enough about it, but if you're interested, it is well worth clicking on the link below because I've already reached Masterclass Session 23. And this is where we have recordings, discussions, a live Q&A, looking at different topics. And I thought I'd share with you this important topic that I discussed in this masterclass about lymphatics. And it's one of those areas in medicine that is poorly understood. And as a result, people don't quite get what it's about. But the more that I've done research, especially with regards to what is happening with post-COVID issues, I believe that they are actually quite central to what is going on. So I'm giving you a taste as to what we had recently discussed in this presentation on lymphatics so that you have a basic understanding of it and where it may fit in in terms of your health and well-being. And this is essentially what the lymphatic system is about. And you can see all of these connections throughout the body, all the way from the head in the cervical um, system, supraclavicular is mainly the upper limb, axillary as well, um, under the armpits. Um, then you have a whole set of lymph nodes all the way through, going down the groin has a high collection of them. Uh, there are some in the, around the intestines. So you have this whole lymphatic system in place, and it is there as a very important aspect for your health and trying to see if it can maintain your health. And some basic principles, it's not a bloodstream, but the lymphatic vessels actually do help to move the fluid along as you are generally moving about. And it has these one-way valves in it so that the fluid can only go in one direction. There are no red blood cells in here. There are lots of white blood cells and it has a lot of uh, fatty stuff in there because most of the fat absorbed from the gut uh, or the intestine is sent through lymphatics, not the liver. And so it's a very important part of the system that clears stuff, supports immunity and is therefore also linked to chronic inflammation. One of the problems we have with the lymphatics is that in truth, we don't understand it very well. And critically, we don't have any good investigative techniques to be able to look at it regularly. And what that means is that unlike when we look at tissues, you know, we can do a CT scan, you know, which will see organs, the lungs, the liver, the intestine, the bones, you know, um, the brain. We can do an MRI scan, which gives us even more detail with regards to the structure of the tissues and so on. So very valuable. We can then do things like PET scans, which then look at very specific use of glucose or other molecules in the body. But the measurement as to what happens in the lymphatic system is not so easily done. And that's part of the problem. And therefore, we, very, we, we don't understand a lot about it. But just to give you a simple insight as to what this lymphatic system does. So this here is a lymph node here. And this is just one of many nodes. And if you've had an infection, say, in your throat, sometimes the lymph node in your neck can get swollen. And it's just very simple. You have all of these incoming afferents into the lymph node, which is bringing lymph fluid. And this acts like a filter. And it has all lots of white blood cells in here, B cells, T cells, um, natural killer cells, macrophages. And so the lymphatic fluid has to pass through this in order to continue on its journey before it gets to the blood screen, bloodstream. And so this system filters the lymphatic fluid. And you may wonder, well, where does the lymphatic fluid come from? Well, when a blood vessel is going to a tissue, every tissue, if you imagine that it pushes fluid out in the tissue, uh, not red blood cells uh, or white blood cells specifically, but the plasma and anything else in it into the space around it, you can think that about 90% of it goes back into the vein. The other 10% is then screened by the lymphatics. 
So it's like a filter, a screening tool to check and see what exactly is going on in the body and make sure if there are any infections, it can pick it up quickly. So these lymphatics are absolutely critical in terms of our health. It has no central pump, as I'd said. It just moves based on your own movement, breathing, you know, activity. As we said, they're one-way valves. And we do have um, in, the, um, in the alternative uh, medicine uh, um, system, uh, there are lots of people Western medicine. It is something we are aware of. And it is something that is relevant in certain diseases, but it is not a central part of what we do. And this is a problem because if we don't understand it outside of cancers like a lymphoma, you know, or a lymphangitis, which is an inflammation with infection, if there are diseases that are concentrated in here, they will be largely blind to it. And this is, again, just a quick idea as the circulation of lymphatic fluid. You know, blood circulation, the spleen almost acts like a, a lymphatic organ in the bloodstream to clear um, waste and old red blood cells. But the rest of the body pushes the about a proportion, maybe about 10% through the lymphatic system, and it circulates coming back through this thoracic duct, which is just um, in the chest cavity, and it then goes back into the bloodstream where it continues to then uh, circulate. And so it's a very sophisticated system. And the reason I'm highlighting it is because it got specifically affected in the context of the COVID pandemic, specifically around vaccination. Uh, this is an important thing that got missed at the time that I think is really important in the context of people who have ongoing inflammatory issues, especially after the vaccine. And when we look at what happened here, we would have expected that when you have the vaccine, you can have some minor inflammation in the lymph nodes, in the draining lymph nodes, because if you get it in the deltoid, those draining lymph nodes could sometimes become a little bit inflamed. But it's important to note that even in the research perspective, when you're doing early research, if people get lymphadenopathy, you would want them to highlight that as an adverse response. So it's not that it can't happen, but it's not something that we expect to happen too much in terms of what is going on. This is where an interesting study had been done very early in the pandemic in 2021 because they were looking at lymph nodes looking for cancer. And they found that if somebody had been vaccinated, they could not determine if they had cancer or if it was just because of the vaccine. This was how significant the inflammation was. And they did a study on it looking at hypermetabolic lymphadenopathy where they were measuring the uptake of glucose in these lymph nodes. And this is just showing you a picture of a lymph node here, green being mild, orange being moderate, red being high, and red being high with enlarged. And this is a CT, or not a CT, but a, a PET scan imaging. And anywhere the glucose is taken up in a high form, it shows up as dark. And there's a tiny dot here for mild uptake. Now, if this patient had cancer and you saw this, it may make you think that this cancer had spread to that lymph nodes, okay? So this is, this is where it's relevant is because they do the PET scans because they're trying to understand the spread of cancer because cancer cells tend to use a lot of glucose. And so you can identify where they are or where the disease has spread by using these PET scans with labeled glucose and seeing where lights up. And it's in this context that they found that the problem that they had is that you had multiple levels of uptake in people who had been vaccinated. This is moderate with this dot. This is high, you can see how dark it looks compared to the other one. And in this one, this is dark with enlarged lymph nodes. And so, they then decided to study it in relation to COVID vaccines. Now, the first important thing is that this is unusual and it suggests 
a hyperactive immune response to the COVID vaccine. Now, when we look back at it and we see the doses and the way how the spike protein interacts with the immune system, it's now no longer surprising. But when you looked at the data from that study uh, there, and in this study, it was hypermetabolic lymphadenopathy following administration of BNT162B2 mRNA COVID vaccine. Incidents assessed by 18F, FDG, PET, CT, and relevance to study interpretation. So as I said, they were looking at cancer patients, and then they found that this was messing up their um, their readings, and they had to wait. But if you look at this here, and this looked at about a 1,000 people, it was a pretty good-sized study. Gray means there was no hypermetabolic lymphadenopathy. If it was light cream, they had grade one or mild. If it was orange, it was moderate, moderate yellow. If it was dark yellow or brownish, it was um, severe. And if it was um, grade four, where they had enlarged lymph nodes after, it was this brownish, dark brown color. And so what you can see is that in terms of time frames, within four days of being vaccinated, we are talking about almost 78, 76 to 78 percent of people had some degree of hypermetabolic lymphadenopathy. Only 24 percent of them didn't. By five to nine days, it was down to uh, 41 percent, didn't have any more left. And you can see as it goes down by the days, this decreased. But even up to 25 days after, 2% still had grade 4 lymphadenopathy. And just so that I remind you, this is what grade 4 looks like. So 2% of that population had an enlarged lymph node with very high uptake of the glucose. This is not normal. And when you then extrapolate that across a population, because you have to remember, many of these people didn't necessarily have any symptoms. They weren't on well with it. It was just there. But as I pointed out in the context of your lymphatic system, this suggests that the immune system has become hyper-responsive. And in my view, that's a red flag. Because once it occurs, the challenge that I say to people, it's not necessarily that you need more immunity. You probably need less. And that's where I think we have gotten confused. My suspicion is that for people who are struggling with longer-term symptoms, if we were starting to do PET scans more broadly, looking specifically for hyperactive lymph nodes, we would then see patterns of disease because one of the most significant symptoms is fatigue. And I will tell you that when you look at the two conditions that are very strongly associated with fatigue, I mean profound fatigue outside of the long COVID issue, one of them is lymphangitis, meaning that if a patient had infection and you saw the lymph uh, the lymph um, tracks lighting up, you literally see them going as red lines going up the leg, one of the most serious infections, you have to very aggressively put them on antibiotics to try and see if you can stop that. But people feel absolutely sick and fatigued with it. So it indicates that when this lymphatic system gets activated, it causes profound immune changes, which can then cause fatigue. Similarly, lymphoma, which is a cancer involving the lymph nodes, one of the very early symptoms is fatigue, very profound fatigue. And again, it shows you when you have lymph node involvement, you can have these very subtle unusual symptoms. And this is why when you look back at the study again as a final point, when we think about the fact that in effect 78% by this time had no lymph and lymphadenopathy after 25 days, what it means is that 12% still had it present, of which 2% still had grade 4. When you extrapolate that across a population, 
that is pretty significant. And as I said, this is the reason why some of these points are so very important for us to address. We need to find ways to try and see if we can solve these challenges and make sure that we have a good understanding of the science. So as a reminder, this is from my series with regards to the masterclass. That was session 23. If you're interested, please click on the link and you can join that subscription. If you want to be live, look out for that link as well. And we have so many more topics to look at over time. And this is just a taster of one of them that we had addressed uh, with some questions that would have been heard if you listened to the full uh, issue. So uh, we'll continue to keep you updated. Um, I'm reminding that you must uh, like and subscribe Please, at the moment, the, you would not believe the suppression that goes with this kind of content. And so with your liking and subscribing, you help to make sure more people see it. Thank you very much for joining and look out for more information in the near future.